the band this morning for that great introduction to our meeting and it's lovely to see you all this morning. It's good to see Vaughan and Ian um, sharing with us this morning. Uh, nice to have you. <coughs> Following on from the meeting this morning, uh, the band will be going to Chillingham House at 12.15 to do a service then. Our midweek activities are as follows. Monday our cafe at 9.30 followed by the Cameo Club at 1.30 uh, the House Fellowship is this month um, at half seven at, um, at our house, um, all welcome. And also fireflies take place on Wednesday at 3.30. Thursday will be the parent and toddler group at 9.30 and the coffee morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, and just a couple of up and coming events. Uh, Messy Church will take place on Friday the 25th of October. Um, and if you can help in any way with this, uh, please see the majors and I'm sure they'll give you a little job to do. And then a new activity for us, uh, Crafty Creations. Um, I'm sure you all have got a little bit of craftiness in you somewhere. So from the 25th of October, um, from 12 till 2 and um, you can come along here and we're going to try and make a variety of Christmas crafts if you don't think you're crafty but you can do a bit of knitting then just bring your knitting along bring your woodwork along just please come and share bring a friend enjoy your cuppa and a natter and a bit of crafting uh, there's a poster in the outlook which gives you the details uh, can I just please encourage you um, to use all of these activities to invite people along to the army and um, to help us build church community, uh, which I'm sure you will agree that we're all called to do. Um, I was really challenged this week uh, talking to some Christian friends um, about church community. And we talked about being friendly and befriending. And the two were very, very different. I think we're excellent at Munkweemouth of being friendly. With people get a great well when they come. I can see people chatting to anybody who is new or not been here before. But the next step is to befriend people and to get alongside them, uh, get to know a bit more about them. Um, where can we help? What can we do? How can we help each other? And we can only really do that by building them up and spending time with them. And through all these activities, um, we can spend a bit of time with people and you will also meet people in your everyday activity. And I was also challenged by someone to say, um, always tell people or try and tell people that you're praying for them. So you meet someone, I met someone this week and they're in quite a difficult situation and I said, I'm gonna pray for you. And she said, oh, thank you so much. 
And I was like really taken aback because I was a little bit nervous about saying, I'll pray for you. Uh, but she was so appreciative of the prayer. So there's a challenge for you this week. Tell someone that you're going to pray for them this week. Moving on with the announcements. Um, the flowers on the altar table uh, this morning in birthday memories of Alan Rag from Lillian. And it's lovely to remember um, Alan this morning. Uh, Jean Rian has been in hospital this week. Uh, please continue to pray for Jean and Melvin um, as they struggle with ongoing health concerns. And I know that you will continue to pray for all the members of our fellowship who suffer from ill health uh, or in need at this time. Uh, and we just want to say a thank you to the band this morning uh, for leading our meeting um, and for their very faithful service over many years. How many years? I, got, I wrote down 140, but I thought I'd better just check over 140 years, uh, you know, which is absolutely marvellous, isn't it? Uh, and we really do appreciate everything that the band does. So over to you. Thank you. Good morning. Good to be here sharing in the Lord's presence today. And thank you, Susan, for s sort of setting the scene for what ministry and core ministry is all about reaching out to others you remember the founder William Booth when he was so very ill and he'd had an eye operation he couldn't get to the huge meeting in the Royal Albert Hall and he sent a telegram we don't hear much about telegrams these days but he sent a telegram and on that telegram was one word. It was read out to that huge congregation. And the one word was others. Others. And ministry as a Salvation Army band, as a songsters, as a core, is to reach out to others. We're engaged in mission and ministry and pray that the Lord will give us that vision for how we can reach out. So thank you, Susan, for setting that scene. But let's come to the Lord in worship this morning. The band's going to help us with our music, as they all always do. And we're singing number 56 in our songbook. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him. For he is my, thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, brothers and sisters, draw near. Praise him in glad adoration. Let's stand as we sing. The band's using the scripture songs arrangement. There'll be an introduction. And uh, just follow the bandmaster. Thank you. <laughs>
into exclamations of joy and gladness, ye who serve the Lord. God is not dead. He is ever our God. He made us. We belong to him. We are his children and servants. And his love for us never runs out. His care and concern for us will go on forever. Let the world see our manifestations of joy. Let us lift up our voices in songs of praise and surrender our lives as continued offerings of thanksgiving. Let us bless his name forever. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, God of love. Let's sing together. Music says, be still, be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. Be still, let the Lord just minister to you in these moments, and then Trevor's going to bring us to the Lord in prayer.
shall we share together in the fellowship of prayer. O oh God, our loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the joys of this, of this day, that we are met in the presence of a living Saviour. We thank you for last evening, when there was a celebration of music, of brass and voice. I want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for that gift of music, music that lifts us out of ourselves, music that calms a troubled soul. Salvation Army music, which brings conviction and confirms the faith because of the music contained in it, because of the message contained in it. And we thank you for last night, for the celebration of mission and service of two bands, each completing 140 years of ministry of proclaiming the gospel in their particular sphere. But I want to thank you, Lord, for my band, for this band, for its ministry through the years, through music. The thrill of playing to great numbers in great halls and great venues, of sharing the blessing with a few in small churches and chapels and community centers, for offering prayer and hope for those who are passing by in the street, and more importantly, for me being able to share in the ministry of this band with our congregation here, week by week, in this building, with this congregation. And thank you, Lord, for the fellowship of this band, for sharing so many joys and concerns together. But looking beyond our band, I thank you now, Lord, for what is happening in our total core church family together. The joy of new soldiers over the last few weeks. For the joy that the Ukrainian fellowship, in their hour of need, the joy and color that they have brought to our fellowship. And looking beyond, I see so pos the possibility of so much influence from this community of Christian people together. The lunch club, the cameo club, the fireflies, the toddlers, the coffee, the war crime ministry. Through all this, we have so much opportunity to meet people and share with them the good news of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a glimpse of the future with all these things that are happening. But in that, we want to see a very clear vision. So our prayer, Lord, is that you will clear our eyesight, clear our doubts, and help us to see the vision that you have for, our, for us here in Monk Weirmouth, aware very much that each and every one has our part to play. And so I pray for each of us looking to the future, we each of us pray for ourselves this prayer in this quiet moment still before your throne, conscious of your presence, knowing I am known, in this quiet moment, set my spirit free. In this quiet moment, make a better me. Amen. Thank you, Trevor. My thinking today 
looking back into the Old Testament at the musicians who were called of the Lord back in those very early days. The king's musicians. And as we think about those things, I've asked Brian Wall to just share something of his experience as a Salvation Army bandsman and what that means to him. Good morning. Good to see you all worshipping with us today. When Morris asked me to talk about what is a Salvation Army band, we did have a discussion. Uh, and I said to Morris, well, I only know about Salvation Army bands. I've never, ever played in another band or in another group. And even as far as Salvation Army bands are concerned, I don't go all the way back to 1879, the first band, a concert for sure. There's around 2,500 Salvation Army bands around, and as well as the brass bands that we know, there are also wind bands, big bands. But I have a very limited view. I've played 50 years this month in this band. Uh, and before that, I played for a couple of years at Portsmouth Citadel. Uh, my first band was Bristol Bedminster for a few months. And then I played in a few music school, divisional youth bands, and YP bands. What I do feel able to talk to you about today is what the Sal Salvation Army banding means to me and why after 50 years I continue to play in this band today. In my soldier's commission, it includes the words, I will spend all the time, strength, money, and influence I can in supporting and carrying on the Salvation War and I believe the existence of the Salvation Army Band is still part of our mission today in carrying out the Salvation War. And I would say it's in three main areas. Uh, firstly, making a joyful noise. Now, it used to be a scriptural thing. Now it's a major David thing, isn't it? That he always says, make a joyful noise, not necessarily a tuneful one. Yeah, so that's become a, a major David thing. But we, we're here to make a noise for the Lord. We're here to support our worship, which we do each Sunday within our church building. And we're here to attract people outside of the church building to the Salvation Army, to the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. It may surprise some of you to know uh, that it hasn't always been easy for me to be part of the Salvation Army band here. Although it's a lot easier work-life balance now for me, there were many years with a young family and I was often working away from home where standing down from the band seemed the logical decision. In fact, I remember talking to bandmasters over the years about the number of times that I have to be missing. And I always found a great level of support from the bandmasters uh, throughout the years and uh, having uh, Brian uh, around at the moment, Nathan and uh, Joe, uh, reminds me of uh, the bandmaster throughout the years who've supported me. When the band was large, I often felt quite superfluous to requirements, sitting usually on the bass section, very much questioning if it was a good use of the limited time I had available. And unlike many others, I've always been mystified that I haven't found it easy ever to play a brass instrument. The joy of playing a brass instrument often escapes me. And things that I find relatively easy to do, such as singing in the songsters, where I find joy in the singing, just doesn't come to me when I'm playing a brass instrument. And I don't know why. So I'll leave that with you if anybody has the answer. I don't really want to know. It's probably a bit late to find out. So why did I continue in the band? Probably the main thing was to be supportive of others. Often I've had a commission or a position within the corps and supporting the bandmaster in particular and the songs leader was a very big thing in my life. I also made a decision early on that even though it would make my 
difficulties in playing even worse, I will accept playing any instrument the bandmaster asked me to play, with the exception of cornet. Uh, and I've played a few, uh, but I do feel, I have always felt, that this is not about my personal preference. It's about the sound of the band, the balance of the band, and what the Lord wants to use the band for. And I saw this as something I could offer with limited abilities within our, within our band. In recent years, as I believe the Salvation Army, continu Salvation Army Band continues to be an important part of our ministry, and as our numbers are smaller, I feel even more compelled to remain a member to ensure that our ministry can continue for as long as a God has a purpose for our band. In everything I do, I try to do it in God's name, and I try to be positive in my outlook perhaps part of the nature that you would recognize from me. But it probably comes from a childhood where I was quite insecure and very much lacking in confidence. And I find portraying a positive at attitude helps me in, the way, uh, in a way to perform to the best of my ability. I mentioned in the newsletter this week that some scripture verses that Audrey brought to us on Thursday had spoken to me, and they were from Psalm 98. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. And as I continue my service, I pray that I'll always be inspired to be a musician for the Lord in whatever form is relevant to the ministry of the day and through service and music I pray that I will be able to reflect the words of the very old chorus which says there's joy in following Jesus all the way there's joy in following Jesus every day his love is like a rainbow when earthly skies are gray there's joy in following Jesus all the way amen Thank you, Brian, for sharing that, those words with us today. And thank you for your service, and thank you all our musicians, singers and musicians, for all their service, which enhance our worship so much. I mentioned the Old Testament, and I've asked our retired band master, Brian Hutchinson, to bring the scriptures to us today. Thank you, Brian. Our scripture reading this morning is really in two parts. Now, I'll give you the first part now, which comes from Chronicles uh, 6. Uh, chapter 6, verses 31 to 34. And it's headed, headed at the temple musicians. Uh, David assigned the following men to lead the music at the house of the Lord after the ark was placed there. They ministered with music at the tabernacle until Solomon built the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. They carried out their work, following all the regulations handed down to them. These are the men, or some of the men, who served along with their sons. Heman, the musician, was from the clan of Kohar. Heman's first assistant was Asaph, from the clan of Gershon. Heman's second assistant was Ethan, a man from the clan of Merari. Their fellow Levites were appointed to various other tasks in the tabernacle of the house of God. And the second lesson is Chronicles, chap uh, Chron Chronicles chapter 5, verses 11 to 14. And it's headed, The Ark Brought to the Temple. Then the priests left the holy place. All of the priests who were left present had purified themselves. Whether or not they were the musicians, Asaph, Heman, Jethunan, and all their sons and brothers were dressed in fine linen robes and stood at the east side of the altar, playing cymbals 
lyres and harps. They were joined by 120 priests who were playing their trumpets. The trumpets and singers performed together in unison to praise and give thanks to the Lord, accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments. They praised their voices and praised the Lord with these words, he is good, his faithful love endures forever. At that moment, a thick cloud filled the temple of the Lord. The priests could not continue the service because of the cloud. For the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple of God. May God blood his mess blood have his messing. Good morning to the reading of those words. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Yes, the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple. I think this morning the theme and the ideas right from Susan setting that theme about seeing the future. Where is the future coming from? What's going to happen? And the songster's song echoes that idea with the theme of vision and mission. What do we see in the future? Brian mentioned it in his testimony. How is the Lord going to use us, even though perhaps we're a smaller group? How is the Lord going to use all of us as we discover what God can do through us? And so here's the songsters with the lovely new song to share with us, Vision and Mission.
You are the source of life I found. You are the one who fills with fire. You lead me up to higher ground. <coughs> Vision and mission. What is the Lord saying to us? Where is he taking us? What does he want us to do? I've asked Joe to uh, share a testimony, both in word and I think he's going to play for us as well. And so uh, if you'd like to come, Joe, thank you. Have you noticed how Morris likes to encourage the younger members of the band? <laughs> so I'm, I'm probably, uh, well, I'm not probably, I am one of the younger members of this band. Uh, and I've, I've been in the band for over 50 years now as well. So uh, that tells you something, doesn't it? Uh, Morris asked me to, uh, to choose a slow m melodic solo to play and to introduce it from my perspective. Um, the solo I'm going to play is Take Up Thy Cross, which might seem an odd choice for me. Some, sometimes I find that the words uh, in some of the songs that we sing are quite uh, hard to sing truthfully. So, thing, example, a song like, I love to sing of the Savior who gave his life for me. Well, I don't love to sing much, so I, I, wouldn't like to, I wouldn't like to sing, I love to sing of the Savior. I'm more than happy to tell you about him, uh, but I definitely won't be singing about it. Similarly, the song, Joy, 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 There is Joy in the Salvation Army, can be difficult for me to sing if I'm not particularly feeling in a joyful mood. This song, Take Up Thy Cross and Follow Me, is one such, such song that I have struggled with. If you can put the, uh, the particular verse on the screen um, and, uh, and then the chorus after this. This is the second verse of that uh, uh, song. And it speaks about uh, Jesus and the cross and uh, um, in particularly in the, co in the co chorus, and uh, it's the, c the cross is identified with death. When Jesus carried his cross, he knew that he was on the way to Calvary with all the associated pain and certain death. We are reminded in verse 2 um, that he carried his cross and suffered the shame, pain, and death for me. He sacrificed his life for me. Of course, we know that he rose again and conquered death so that I could have eternal life. But it's not just for me. It's for everyone in this room and on this earth, in fact. So I look at this song and I see that Jesus is calling for me to take up my cross and follow him. Does this mean that I have to suffer shame, pain, and death the same as he did? Well, not necessarily. And I may be wrong in my thinking, but I rather think that there are different meanings in here, although I can't speak for Alfred Henry Ackley, who penned the words. I think that it is about death, but it is about dying to self. In other words, confessing that I'm a sinner and I want to accept Jesus into my life 
as my Lord and Saviour and handing my life over to him. I did this when I was a young boy at Stockton Citadel. I can remember Auntie Ruth, she wasn't a real auntie, but we called everybody auntie and uncle in those days. I can remember Auntie Ruth taking me um, to kneel at the mercy seat and praying with me, and it was there that I accepted Jesus into my life. From then, I started praying to be a better person, and all through my life, I have involved God in every important decision that I have had to make. He has been, me through, he has been with me through hard times, for example, when I've uh, faced uh, redu redundancy and didn't have a job or jobs. The Holy Spirit has also been a source of comfort to me when my parents died. He has also shared in the good times too. Um, and uh, a bit too numerous to uh, mention, but obviously one is when I got married to Susan there. Um, that was a good time. <laughs> The chorus, the chorus also talks about sacrifice. And I also believe that it is my cross and therefore my sacrifice that it is referring to. This is individual to me. And you, th and you, th you, uh, you might think my sacrifices are trivial when stacked up against other people's. And you might be correct. But it is my cross and my sacrifices that I have to take up. What sacrifices have I made in my life? In thinking about this, there are probably two main sacrifices that I've made, which you might think are really trivial. One result of dying to self and handing my will to God was that I couldn't necessarily do all the things that I wanted to do when I wanted to do them. So, I loved playing sport, and one thing that I had to sacrifice early on was the possibility of playing football on a Sunday. Most of the other lads on the school football team uh, were playing Sunday football and couldn't understand why I didn't. I did get into some interesting conversations with uh, my mum and dad at the time and uh, those teammates as well. I remember, I remember that I couldn't go to a county trial match because it was on a Sunday. So... Um, it might seem trivial to you, but for me as a young lad, it was a, a very big deal. When I stopped playing football, I took up golf, and I have to confess that there are some times, particularly when I look out the window and the sun's shining in, that um, um, when I'm in this building, sometimes I would rather be out there playing golf. <laughs> but you know, when you, have, when you give your life to God and start doing what he wants you to, then he gives fulfillment and enjoyment. He certainly does that for me. The other great sacrifice for me was the sacrifice of time. So at an early age, I found that I was reasonably good at uh, playing the cornet. I was taught by my parents and others that playing the cornet is a sanctified talent. And it was something that I would do and did do in worship to God. I was also told that only the best was good enough for God. So I set about practicing to make myself better and to off offer that acceptable music in worship to God. I have lost count of the hours of practice that I have put in. It's, it, it is literally in the thousands now um, uh, that I put in throughout the years, all dedicated to the worship of God. I'm still doing it now. And I'm grateful to have such a loving and understanding wife who loves to hear me practicing. <laughs> of course, God also gives me great enjoyment through playing my cornet. And funnily enough, the more I practice or sacrifice time, the more I enjoy performing. I hope that you enjoy this melody and that you look at the words and contemplate on what your particular cross is. Amen.
Thank you, Joe. And thank you for your ministry at the piano as well, David. We're so grateful for your ministry that means so much. Let's just sing again, number 376. And we'll just stand and share these two verses. King of kings, majesty, God of glory, living in me. And uh, Joe helped us to realize that our focus of our life is through Jesus and all that he has done for us. 376, shall we stand and sing? And David's going to help us. <laughs> seated. <coughs> the band are going to play a meditation and it's been arranged by Andrew Blythe and it's entitled Boundless Grace and it features the tune written by William Bradbury, Even Me, in uh, 1862. Um, it was inspiration, a set of verses written by Elizabeth Codner, uh, which was written as a result of a revival within the church. I think the words will be on the screen as we play, um, but you'll hear the reference to Even Me right from the start, the first verse. Lord, I hear showers of blessing, thou art scattering, Fallen free, showers the thirsty land refreshing, let some showers fall on me, even me, even me, let some showers fall on me. This is boundless grace.
even me, even me, let some blessing fall on me. Perhaps just a few thoughts in these final moments about the king's musicians playing and singing for the king, the king of kings. I probably don't notice in the, uh, in the Bible reading that Brian brought to us about the regulations. And uh, we have orders and regulations for bands as well. And um, interesting to just look at the aims of what we're about as Salvation Army musicians, as the King's musicians, our supreme aim. The aim of all music making is to proclaim the gospel and help to accomplish the Salvation Army's mission. Salvationists have a primary commitment to the Christian life and to Salvation Army principles and regard their musical service as part of their total offering to God. Musicians will be supportive to their total core centre programme, often seeking to be involved in other aspects of its ministry. They will cooperate with the core leaders to maintain that programme. And belief in the value of music as the vehicle for worship and communication will require a commitment to the highest possible standards while ensuring that performance never becomes an aim in itself. So music in Christian worship must be so much more than performance. It's the vehicle by which God, through the Holy Spirit, can bring blessing, lead worship, and convey the message of God's love and salvation through that life and sacrifice of Jesus that Joe spoke to us about. In many ways, the dedicated musicianship is a spiritual gift. It's a sacred gift, and canon does enhance the worship. So often the Holy Spirit has moved in the meeting through the playing and singing to change lives and bring people to a point of conversion. I can remember a meeting when the band were playing, just as we were a few minutes ago, and the bandmaster left the band, knelt at the mercy seat. Band carried on playing, and many more came to the mercy seat as well. Yes, to quote a, perhaps a, a piece that the trombones play, but wonders begin when the Lord comes in. It's true, isn't it? When the Lord comes to us and comes into the meeting, wonders begin. And of course, in the Old Testament, those musicians were part of the priesthood, had this great responsibility. And King David, a musician himself, assigned the leader, Hemen, to organize the music. He was uh, the bandmaster. He had to follow the regulations handed down to him. And in Chronicles, we read about those uh, regulations and the blessings that came. And different priests were assigned which instruments to play. I wonder what the band sounded like. Cymbals, lyres, harps, 120 trumpets. Can you just imagine it? 120 trumpets and other instruments. And the singers and trumpets, trumpeters performing in unison to praise and give thanks to the Lord. Even those words are recorded for us. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole earth know what he has done. He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Yes, that love of God. The result of their worship was that such that thick cloud filled the temple of the Lord and the priests couldn't continue their service because of that glorious presence of the Lord filling the temple. And the Lord touches our lives, doesn't he, when we hear music and we're reminded of those words. So music is that vital part of worship. It's a channel by which God can 
use to touch our lives. And of course, the other function of the musicians was to lead the army into battle. They were an encouragement to the fighters, but also a sign that God was the overall force behind the battle. And our Salvation Army mission is to fight against the evil in the world. Our old song uh, in the songbook, 949, reflects that. Come join our army. To battle we go. Jesus will help us to conquer the foe. Fighting for right and opposing the wrong, the Salvation Army is marching along. Come join our army, the foe we defy. True to our colours, we'll fight till we die. Saved from all sin is our war cry and song. The Salvation Army is marching along. We may not be marching the streets as we used to, but we're still engaged in a spiritual warfare. All of us are engaged in it. Not just the band of the songsters or the musicians or whoever the officers. We're so grateful for our core leadership. But it's more than that. Scripture reminds us that our enemy, the devil, prowls around like a lion seeking whom he can devour. We're vulnerable and we must be vigilant. Also, we must be a force for good in this difficult and evil world. It's a battle for all of us as a company of God's people to bring all the gifts and skills that we have to engage in this battle. It's something that each one of us can do to forward that mission. And so in this band weekend, what is God saying to us as his people, as a Salvation Army Corps? Yes, we thank God for the ministry of this band for 140 years, for the heritage and history of Monk Wearmouth Corps. It's been a vital and strong part of our worship. So many dedicated lives who have made music for the Lord in this place. But we need to strengthen our forces, to claim the power of the Holy Spirit, to enable us to fight through the barriers of apathy. I took out a, a newspaper cutting. Believe it or not, Britain is entering its first atheist age. It tells us that the belief in God has changed from more people believing in God to less. And now there are fewer people, only 32% believe in God and 42% don't believe. We're in that situation where we've got to reach out to people. The world needs to hear the good news. We have a huge task, but yet God will help us as we bring those gifts to the Lord and claim his power. We have that vision and mission that the songs has helped us to see this morning. There's a chorus that we used to sing so often before a meeting in the band room and a uh, simple little chorus that says channels only blessed master but with all thy wondrous power flowing through me you can use me every day and every hour a channel through which the lord can come we need that wondrous power flowing through us not just for musicians but for everyone to offer their life to God for him to use, to be that channel. The ark was brought into the temple and that worship went forward to the Lord. There was such an awareness of the spirit of the Lord. That thick cloud filled the temple. May the Lord come with his rich blessing on each of us here today. That uh, repeated line in that band of music we've just played recently.
even me, even me, let your blessing fall on me. Perhaps we could just sing that little chorus, channels only. Thy wondrous power flowing through me, you can use me. A prayer for us as King's musicians, but for each of us to bring our life to the Lord. Our mercy seat is here. If it might be a moment for dedication. I'm sorry if the time has gone this morning, but it's been an opportunity to share our thoughts and our music with you but especially with the Lord in thankfulness to him for all that he has meant to us and will mean in the future because we are channels through which he can come, channels only. Thanks, David. <laughs> So, Lord, we just thank you that we have been able to share in this time of celebration of using your people to bring worship and music into your house. But so much more than the musical expression, we want that our lives will tell for you that we will be channels through which you can come into the lives of those that we befriend, those that we reach out to. Help us, Lord, in our lives to have that vision of what can be. Help us to have that ministry that touches the lives that we meet day by day. But especially in the ministry of this corps that Trevor so reminded us of through the different activities, the different opportunities. But I pray your blessing on the ministry of the band and even today as we go to Chillingham House and as we share with the residents there we will have the opportunity just to bring something of your love into that place but again lord we thank you that we can be your people we can touch the lives around us and we can be those channels through which you can come with your power and your love and your blessing. And we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And let's conclude our worship this morning with number 358. And uh, we'll just sing the first and the last verses of Crown Him with many crowns, the Lamb upon His throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of Him who died for thee and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Let's stand as we sing together. <laughs> Thank you. 
benediction. May the grace of Christ our Saviour and the Father's boundless love with the Holy Spirit's favour rest upon us from above. So may we remain in union with each other and the Lord and possess in sweet communion joys which earth cannot afford. And we pray, Lord, for your blessing upon each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, each one.